Hey everybody, welcome back to the m M&M Podcast, and we are here today with a special guest, uh, Matthew Beaton. Hello. Here. You know, this is my younger brother, and uh, as always, we're here with our co-host Mitch. Mitch, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's good that we have a uh, family affair to talk about this uh, this great program. Mm-hmm. That's a great program. Had a 30-step commute over here. 30-step commute, yes. So like, so a little, little background here is... Uh, I've been recording all of our videos in the other room here. So Matthew's had the pleasure of hearing Mitch and I go on and on about our stuff when I'm just entertaining. out in the open. Just we're entertaining, yes, on and on. And I decided to get a little variety of a background here. We're crammed in Matthew's room. We got a weird headphone set up here. I'm I'm crouched here because restricted by my wire headphones. So I got, I got the nice chair. <laughs> anyone wants to donate, you can send me I yeah. can get new headphones and we can keep going. Gaming chair, you know, gaming PS5, chair, whatever you guys want. Um but yeah, obviously we wanted to talk about Dexter today. Uh, it's one of our favorite shows. Alex and I um, bonded over it early on mm-hmm. in our university career. And then it was great that uh, Matthew uh, had watched it recently. So we have a pair of fresh eyes to talk about the series with us because I'm sure there are some things we forgot or chose to forget mm-hmm. about the series. So we'll get into all of it, uh, including the new series, obviously, New Blood. So If anyone hasn't seen it and plans on seeing it, you can skip that part at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, But by now, I'm guessing you would have seen it if you wanted to. But maybe this will inspire you to watch it. So you never know. Put a timestamp for spoiler points. So yeah, Yeah. there you go. So I guess just like one area we can start about Dexter. First of all, it has quite the cult following. Like it it has a, a pretty substantial like fan base, but it's not like universal, I would say. Uh, It's kind of like a dedicated group as opposed to something everyone watched, like The Sopranos in its day or Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's a big one. It was a bit more more niche, you know, obviously given the subject matter. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think like one thing about Dexter that kind of perfectly encapsulates the the vibe of the show or the tone of the show is the intro, Um, like the intro itself with the Mm -hmm. music and that. Um, and I'm not like the film expert like Alex, but even for me, like, I just thought it, it, it like was so good at kind of creating like you're making you uncomfortable, you yeah, know, it, as yeah, you watch it. It was making like the mundane, like, eerie. It was just making it uncanny because as you know, like the intro, you have him like tying his bootlaces and he's like mm-hmm. pulling it like strangling. You squeezing have him using the orange and the blood coming out. Yeah, squeezing the orange yeah. with the ketchup. With, like, and they the, use the, the, yeah, like a blood orange. The, the yeah. floss. He's like. And pulling the, the meat, claws the meat's like searing on the yeah he's like cutting he's like cutting ham and it's like very very <laughs> creepy and and, and also the like upbeat sh- music too. yeah, yeah the shaving. music it's just the upbeat well, the, music and the music's better. like whimsical and it makes it kind of creepy because yeah. of what you're seeing at the same time mm-hmm. so i just thought that kind of shows what kind of show it is where it's like very creative um but i also think like i think anyone who watches the show it's not like I feel like people who haven't seen it would think of it a certain way, whereas actually, like, I find it almost on the lighter side, you know, like, pretty funny. Um, Like, that's kind of the best part of the show. But also, obviously, the storylines and that that's what that's what's captivating. Mm -hmm. Another another thing about the intro is that uh, throughout all eight seasons, it never changed except for once. It did change one time um, when Dexter first had like he was living with newborn. His baby Mm -hmm. was born Harrison. And everything he was doing was thrown off. So it's kind of funny. Like he was doing shoelaces, it was wrong, or he was cutting it, something. It broke, didn't it? Didn't the shoelace like break yeah, or something? Yeah. So. yeah. And then, like, it was all off because you know, like you have a, you have a child in your in your house, so you have to sleep. Um, mm-hmm. Threw him off his groove. Threw him off his groove. Yeah. So he's he's off his yeah. uh yeah, he's off his natural mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's, that's a great point. I actually I actually remember that now, but I hadn't thought of it. Mm-hmm. Um and again, like that's just such a like a good little detail that they throw in. And I think I think if people gave it a shot, they'd like it. I feel like there's something for everyone. And mm-hmm. it's really not as like gruesome or scary as people who haven't seen it. Would think. <coughs> it's pretty like, it's obviously there's like, you know, killing in that, yeah, but it's not done moments, in like, but... in like a super like, you know, gruesome mm-hmm. or, or scary way or anything like that. Well, I like how I, you brought up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, keep going. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say I like how um you mentioned Game of Thrones because you have like cult following but it has like such a darker atmosphere, um so much more mature themes and in this you have 
it, it's like a lighter tone, right? You have those like darker things, it's but jokes, it's lighter. It's, witty. it's jokes, yeah. it's witty, exactly. And then, so that's, and I think that's what captures people, but also the unique characters. Cause then you mentioned it mm -hmm. too. It was like, um, especially with Dexter. Cause like the one thing I, I really loved about it was his little like internal narration mm -hmm. that you hear throughout the whole series. Cause it just makes it like, we all have those inner thoughts kind of thing. Yeah. Um, his are a little different. His are a little different. And so you hear that and just like, he's saying the quiet part out loud uh, for us. So it's, yeah. it's really cool how that's how he like maneuvers his day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I totally agree. Like it, it was funny because that's kind of the way, like I kind of have just, I'm just thinking like a lot. Um, like we kind of like not not, like not the stuff he's right? thinking about <laughs> not the stuff he's thinking about but like i'll be doing stuff and be like hmm should i do this or that or like how, how am i gonna you know whatever mm -hmm. and so like hearing sometimes like when he would have something that was funny or whatever like i would relate to it sometimes like when okay. you're in a rush or something and someone stops to talk to you and you're like oh my god like you know like yeah. inside like i do not want to talk to you right now um but it's a great point you made about the characters that's probably my favorite part of the show it's like all the characters are just unique and and kind of funny in their own way like obviously Dexter is like Dexter um I don't even really know how much to add obviously he's like a sociopath but also likable like I I, I, I think a lot of people found him quite likable that's why the show works you know yeah like a charming quality in a yeah sense. yeah Lots and as the season <laughs> yeah yeah and as the seasons went along didn't it feel like he, it seemed like he was getting more kind of normal right like for lack of a better term, just like more yeah, yeah. suitable for society as opposed to like at the start, he was like really kind of isolated and didn't connect mm -hmm. with people at all. I think by the end, he was like pretty genuinely cared for people. Kind of like assimilated know? into like, I'm actually can be sociable or can hide his dark passenger better kind of mm -hmm. thing. And so I, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, go ahead, man. Yeah, he like integrated his like, almost like a Batman kind of thing where he integrated yeah. his, his real life into his... uh uh, his killing and mm -hmm. he used like his cover life that's what he called it mm -hmm. um like his life with his kids and rita and everything uh, as his as his cover yeah so. for sure and i guess like we could kind of talk about some of the characters um mm -hmm. obviously most of them are part of like the police force he was working at um so i guess like batista you know he, yep. he's kind of a likable guy very loyal very nice guy, but also kind of has his own demons that he has to work through. Um, a, a, just a horrible cop. Um, <laughs> that, that's one thing is like a lot of the cops that were there were not very good. Like it's definitely not the most realistic um, crime drama of all time. Um, and I guess obviously Deb is kind of one of the main characters other than Dexter, I would say. Um, I, I love Deb. She had a mouth on her. It yeah. was hilarious. Like <laughs> she just, she, yeah. she didn't take shit from anybody. And she just mm -hmm. told told everybody as she, she saw it. And that's like, it, it did hurt her, like, you know, in, in a lot of situations. But at the end of the mm -hmm. day, it was like, if she needed to be like, that was like, I guess that's how she got ahead of a lot of yeah. people, you know? Yeah. She was definitely like very tightly wound, but always mm -hmm. like had her heart in the right place and, and definitely like was a good person. And then obviously towards the end, things went south, oh, yeah. uh, but we'll get to that. I would say, and then like you have LaGuerta who... Mm -hmm. I will say my opinions kind of changed a bit as I watched it later on because uh, I first watched it when I was like 14 or 15. So like I was kind of just like dumb and like not really thinking of things in a mature way. And like later on, like I like Deb more. Um, I think LaGuerta, like she's obviously extremely career driven, which sometimes made her a bit of a, a backstabber kind of. Mm -hmm. um, but really that's kind of just politics, right? Like when you when you're in a role like that where jobs are given kind of on a whim just like who do you like right I, th I think she was she was forced into that too because like she I think she was very career driven and then at that point she had to she was learning like okay there's a lot more to this like this life because there's a lot of pol like all again he said all pol political like stage she had to like mm -hmm. maneuver through everything and I guess she didn't really think about that when she was like climbing the ranks yeah she's mm -hmm. being a good detective being a good captain and mm -hmm. then the politics had to slowly getting into her so you see like eroding her morals sometimes and it like in certain areas and, and that's what i found cool because like that shows her character and like how she handled the situation so she was a very interesting character to me i think she had the most tragic arc like she Probably. went through like she lost a lot of people and got betrayed mm -hmm. no yeah for sure and like even like we'll probably do like kind of a quick run through through the seasons and like season two obviously like we'll get to that but she definitely got screwed over by that 
And the other thing that I come back to is like, you always kind of saw her when, when kind of the, the BS was put aside, like Joyce had good intentions. And I think she had kind of a good heart, like the way she would kind of help people. And especially, I forget which season it was, maybe it was season two where that other woman captain was brought in who was dealing with her own stuff. Mm -hmm. Although in the end, Laguardo was kind of, so that's like an interesting kind of dichotomy, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you saw like the, kind of the best and worst from her. And then I would say the one character I didn't really care for, like I, I didn't hate him or like him was Quinn. He's kind of just like, eh, like, Quinn. Mm. you know, like what did you guys think of him? I just thought he was like, whatever. Like He's very morally gray. Yeah. He kind of fell in that area where um, I think he was a little bit of a dirty cop. You saw that a lot in season seven. Well, he was a dirty cop. Yeah, it was. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he he strayed away from that. Like in his past, he was more. Mm -hmm. And then it's season seven, he dove into his past a lot more. Mm -hmm. Where he saw like he used to make these deals with these uh kind of the like the mob and stuff, mm -hmm. the Ukrainian mob. And he slowly went away from that. He's like kind of done with it. Mm -hmm. not, yeah, not, not much to say, not too much to say about him. But. Yeah. To me, he's basically just kind of like a, a trope detective from like almost any yeah. show. Whereas like other characters were like really well written not that it's not well written but just like really developed and kind of had nuance to them that I enjoyed I feel like Quinn was kind of just like yeah he's like kind of a dirty cop like I guess a decent guy when it when mm -hmm. you boil everything down but just I don't know not that interesting compared to some of the other characters yeah I, he was the trope of um it's just the, the common trope of uh someone turning from a life of like kind of wrongdoings because of love right because he fell in mm -hmm. love with uh oh, what was her name well, he dated stripper. Deb. He, he dated, dated the stripper. Oh, he, he did Deb, but the stripper. So it was like he was trying to turn his life around because of he found love and everything. So like, but he was turning out that way before he met them, like slightly. He was he he knew it was wrong, but then when he had like like uh, people to lose, I guess right. That's when he was mm -hmm. like, okay, like I have to kind of like say no to this. So I kind of like that, but it was a very tropey. I, I have yeah. to have to say that. Yeah, I was kind of growing up because like he wasn't like he wasn't he didn't take much seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was pressured by Batista, who's like father-in-law kind of figure, because he was with her, his his sister. Yeah, his sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he was like pushing him to take the lieutenant's exam, become the next lieutenant. And he just like tried, but he he didn't really like he wouldn't grow up almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I would say maybe my favorite character other than Dexter would be Masuka, who is Masuka. one of the funniest characters I would say from mm -hmm. like any show I've watched. His presence um, was like purely com comedic. Like yeah, it was just that, that was his, that was his purpose. He never had any, like, well, there was like one sort of serious moment. I, for, I forget exactly the context, but basically everyone was treating him like a joke. Um, mm -hmm. And then he got mad. And so he started acting really serious. Like he started wearing like a dress shirt and tie and everything. And then, <laughs> and then they were like needed help with some case. And he like read it off all the, like all this stuff like perfectly. And then ended it with like a super like inappropriate sexual joke. And it was like, <laughs> he is back, which was like yeah. perfect for Masuka. Like they didn't use him too much either. Like it was like, they sprinkled him in perfectly. And one of my favorite things about him is like the first time we see him outside of work in the first season, it's like him driving Dexter home and he has this like giant lifted pickup truck. He's wearing a cowboy hat and listening to country music. <laughs> and it was so funny. Like it just like so, so random. Like he just obviously like overcompensating. Like that's what he is, right? It's like yeah. all kind of overcompensating for something like his jokes and everything, but yeah. you got to love him. I'm glad he didn't end up dying or anything. Like yeah, he, I don't I, think anyway. <laughs> no, I, I love, I love Masuka. He was hilarious. He had a little wholesome mess at the end. Yeah. He, yeah. And he's like trying to get his like hang up, like reconnect his daughter the and daughter, stuff like yeah. that, which is cool. Okay. But, the first time. Oh yeah, it's true. But yeah. I, I just leave me to my question though. Favorite characters before we get into like season one and what's going on. Like Mitch, mm -hmm. who's your favorite character? I mean, I feel like we'd have to remove Dexter. Um, I mean, mm, that would be yeah. mine, but I feel like that's probably most people. I was going to say uh, that, that was, that you was see him the point. most, right? Like yeah. you see him the most and uh, like you can kind of see the good in him because for the most part, he's almost always good. Like his intentions in that, mm -hmm. um, obviously like killing people, that's debatable, but like, <laughs> but in terms of the way he treats like civilians and regular people, like pretty much was always good compared to even other characters um but my favorite um hmm, i guess i would say for for like the non-villains would be 
Masuka, and then my favorite villain would definitely be Arthur Mitchell. He was oh, he was yeah, hilarious. Mm-hmm. That was so funny. He, he Arthur, what's his name? Something Lithgow. I forgot oh, his name. John. But, John Lithgow. John Lithgow I, think. I like to see him in that role because he's he's, he's yeah. a comedic actor. Comedic role, like oh, oh, I'm John Lithgow. Like he just has that that funny cadence of his voice. Yeah, he's hilarious. And yet but... he still was able to like bring that comedy in some some uh parts of that season. Like I remember one in particular. There's like a gif of it, but it was like when him and Dexter were driving to one of the, I think they were driving to, I forget some somewhere important to him. And he does this like little skip and dance, like as they're getting in the car. <laughs> it's just ridiculous because you know, like what kind of monster this guy is, and like how he treats his family and everything. But that's just Dexter. Yeah. Like they're able to walk that line, you know, of seriousness and uncanniness. I guess, yeah. yeah. What would your favorite character or characters be, Matthew? Um, I gotta say, probably either Deb or Dokes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, Dokes. Yeah, I like Dokes yeah. too. We didn't we didn't see a lot of Dokes. But mm-hmm. whenever he was in it, it was never a dull moment. Yeah. You know? He just, he had that stare. Like he was like, the Dokes was, was my favorite character too. And he was, yeah. he was military? Yeah, he was ex-military. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I should have brought him up. I forgot about that, but that's a great one. I guess he's also, he was season two's antagonist. Like, yeah. Technically, yeah. yeah. Him and him and Lila. And like, Lila, mm-hmm. I was going to say, like everything about season two, it, season two is probably my favorite season in general. So mm-hmm. Lila and Dokes might have been my favorite was Lila, was Lila the British? The, uh, oh yeah okay, i'm trying to remember sponsor. her who sponsored dexter sponsor oh because okay, rita yeah. sent him to narcotics anonymous because of his like yeah, kind of weird behavior getting home late and like she just couldn't oh. trust him and then she kind of just assumed it was drugs and he was like oh uh, yeah that's what it is okay now i remember yeah. <laughs> that makes sense and what i love was there was moments where dokes like when uh, dexter had his like inside like narration and dokes mm-hmm. like responded to it he's like what would you say and he turned to him he's like Dexter's like, what? Like, I remember a specific scene where he's yeah. like, and people are like, does, does Dokes have a dark passenger? Like, is he, the, does, does he know this thing? And, yeah. but like, again, the whole famous line the surprise, motherfucker. What a great, what a great, what a great little line that and was. I was talking to you about it, and they're like, they're like, what, what? That's from Dexter? I was like, yeah. And they're like, what's Dexter? And then I was like, that's when I knew the show is more cult following. And mm-hmm. yeah. And so we'll get into that. If you know it, you love it. But if you don't, yeah. know it, it's kind of like a, you don't know it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people probably just assume it's like that new Dahmer show where it's like actually like crazy creepy and like everything. Whereas Dexter's like Dexter's closer to like the like I, I don't know, like the office. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, yeah, it's it's, 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 like a, it's almost just like a it's goofy dramedy, I'd say. Yeah. Almost almost. But. Yeah, I mean it's definitely more on the drama side, but I agree because we see the co- the comedic parts and that's mm-hmm. what we like. Uh, but definitely like Pretty much anyone i feel like could watch it you know maybe just someone like the when he kills people could c- people could get a bit squeamish but other than that like it's but, it's really not that heavy like it's it's a pretty light show but i guess it, no. yeah for sure so i guess we could just get into kind of um a season by season little recap uh just quickly at least the first few because i honestly don't remember so the other ones kind of blend together in my mind he'll, he'll help us oh, out he'll help yeah. us out yeah yeah because the first four seasons of dexter are considered like really really good like yeah. they won some emmys i think uh michael c hall who plays dexter mm-hmm. won emmys or at least one he also for his role. oh wow he directed he directed the show i think he definitely oh, some yeah. of them at least yeah. some of them for sure save yeah like, google on that one i do a little google on that one. you guys keep talking Give me a second. yeah yeah um and so Oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I guess like the first four seasons um, were considered really good, like critically in that. And then the, the last four seasons were not really considered as, as great critically, even though there were good moments. Um, and I believe the showrunner actually left. Like, I think I looked it up mm-hmm. because the first four seasons are like four of my favorite seasons of TV ever. And then the last four, like still watchable and, and worth a watch if you're going to watch the series. But definitely, like I would say a drop off for sure, which is understandable. I mean, when you're writing a show like that, where you kind of have like one antagonist each season, it, there's going to be kind of a drop off, you know, like, yeah, it's like, it's a huge, here's your goal. Like this is the big bad for the season kind of thing, which mm-hmm. is it, it's yeah. it, in terms of serialized, like TV shows where you don't know how many seasons you got, like it, it's a decent formula. I mean, it keeps, they keep doing that over and over again, but yeah. It, and I feel like for and they had some there. like good ideas that I just didn't really think played out. Like there's kind of that weird season where um, 
um, Tom Hanks's son was yeah, the antagonist, <laughs> and it's like that one lost that's, a little bit. That's a good like the idea is like sure that could have been something good maybe and unique like very different to the other seasons right, but it just did not come off like it, it just didn't really work. But still, you know, still had uh, still had Dexter, so it was worth watching. But yeah, so let's go in order then. So like season one, I would say mm-hmm. my favorite seasons are season one okay. and season four personally. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say if one, four, two three something like that uh, but season season one obviously like you get to know Dexter I love the opening scene where he's doing his kind of monologue and everything and and um, it just Sorry. sets the tone you know tonight's the night like just sets the tone perfectly mm-hmm. obviously there's the ice truck killer although they didn't know he's the ice truck killer till a bit of the way through who's like slicing people perfectly and there's like no blood right which is kind of the Strange. opposite yeah and Dexter, I go, Dexter is my, he was like admiring him you could see you could hear in his voice he's like this whole clean precision blah 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 when he's like analyzing the scene and he was like you could tell he was admiring and he's like this guy's good and it was it was just that's that was the weird part for me uncanny right mm-hmm. yeah and it was like and a, then also like you see Dexter how he has a girlfriend right Rita and how awkward he is around her although that kind of works because you see how like she was kind of recovering from being in a really terrible relationship uh, mm-hmm. like a really abusive relationship so the fact that Dexter didn't really care about like, you know, having sex or like being super intimate, uh, just Mm -hmm. like emotionally in that was fine. It was kind of just like a light, nice friendship almost, you know, like Mm -hmm. that's how it started. He said that's why he uh, he was with her Mm -hmm. Um, because he kind of could just be like a companion and people wouldn't think he's like a loner guy. Mm -hmm. I remember when they first met, we didn't show the scene until like season four uh, or season five when uh Rita and Dexter met online they met up and he's actually in the middle of the kill yeah he's in the middle yeah, of the he, kill when he, he showed like no uh no emotion towards Rita and then mm-hmm. actually like in the middle of a kill like he went to another room killed the guy kind of came back yeah he, he just, like went to the bathroom and lines. killed the guy or something <laughs> he knows how to pick up wow it's the first yeah. date I would go kill <laughs> oh, I really I saw thought... how much he grew yeah talk about um talk about like uh tragic arcs oof we'll get to that though um and then i i guess like with that first season too like you see kind of how he balances things you know in terms of personal life which is pretty much just his killing and then and then work obviously dokes is suspicious of dexter from the get-go like, it's just like doesn't like him sense, just right? senses yeah. it right <laughs> and um and then like it really gets interesting when the ice truck killer like starts playing games with dexter like he left the, uh, the the Barbie or whatever head in his freezer and and oh. threw the real life person's head um, at him, I believe, like at his car, right? When he's kind of like yeah. chasing him down he when he didn't truck. know who it was. Oh, yeah, Me- yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, you have Deb who's dating like the uh, the nice, charming uh, prosthetic guy who, <laughs> who <laughs> makes prosthetics for one of the victims of the ice truck killer. And then one thing I liked is we knew who the ice truck killer was before any of them, which I thought was neat. And it's kind of a different way of storytelling, right? Hmm. Um, it was a surprise. Lot of shows, it was like suspense, right? Because we knew, the audience knew, but like, because no one knew it was a surprise, but that's that's where the suspense came. That's like a lot like of the it. show is. It's like, yeah. you know what Dexter knows? And Dexter's mm-hmm. constantly kind of chasing, like like the, the Miami PD is chasing the chasing the, uh, the serial killer. And Dexter's mm-hmm. always two, three steps ahead of them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like, you, it's the, the suspense, because you know it's going to happen. For he sure, breaks, he breaks a few laws to do stay ahead. That's the that's the thing, right? And the other thing is, like, we also didn't know right away. That's the other thing. Some shows you would know right away who the villain is, and they don't know. Whereas mm-hmm. we have no idea. We haven't even met the guy. Then we meet the guy. Don't know who he is. Maybe you get a little suspicion, and then you know before they do, right? So mm-hmm. it's kind of a slow burn, kind of building that suspense and mm-hmm. and the uh, like the interest in who it might be. And then obviously the end of the season, Dexter has to decide, right? Mm-hmm. Who he either has to kill a, um, his sister Deb, who got enga- engaged, um, <laughs> and and uh, the ice truck killer, his brother, because now he knows. By the end, he knew that was his brother, and he has to choose between his like half sister or like I mean basically his sister based on how young he was, but not by blood his sister or his blood brother who he didn't know. But until very those. recently yeah but obviously had. they share like that traumatic experience right 
there's the one person that can relate to him how like he also has that urge to kill but he was mm-hmm. older when the whole instant at the uh in the cargo container with his mother mm-hmm. so he didn't like he didn't it was more um up front with him because he didn't have the mm-hmm. code he didn't have like harry to guide him so yeah. he just kind of killed as he wanted yeah i definitely Dexter. Yeah, like when I watched it again, I definitely felt bad for Dexter in that first season, like having to kill his brother, even though obviously his brother was like the opposite of Dexter. Like that's exactly who Harry didn't want Dexter to become, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like a monster who kills whoever, like for no reason. Um, But obviously like Dexter, who's been so just isolated his whole life, never been able to be himself around anyone except his dad, who obviously passed away years earlier so to finally meet someone where he could be himself that would have been tough but obviously he chose um to kill his brother which was like a very interesting season obviously and i feel like that was that was probably my second favorite season overall what about you guys um i would say probably i like season two the best I'm yeah i'm gonna say that but mm-hmm. i have um, to agree but go ahead <laughs> i was gonna say that situation where he had to choose between deb and his brother kind of almost perfectly mirrors what Deb had to do in season seven, where she had to choose between her brother and LaGuardia, mm-hmm. where they were also in the shipping container as well. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. And it was also that, that uh, I don't know, I, I just thought of that now, because no, it's a great season, point. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great and point. Speaking of tragic arcs, I think Deb had the, the most tragic arc of the oh. show. That's like, she, <laughs> she she knows how to pick them, right? Yep, you see yeah. you see it again and again. Uh, <laughs> Picks the wrong guy. Picks the wrong guy again, again. Um, just uh, again, she goes really far with her, with her, because like she's hard headed, right? So she's gonna go yeah. heads first in, and that hurts her in the long run, like a lot of the time. And uh, uh, but I see the second season of it, like you were saying, was um was my favorite because it was Dokes. It was yeah. almost just Dokes alone because it was that cat and mouse where I thought, and I was t- talking to Matthew about this earlier, was I thought they would have hunting for is our hunting for the Bay Harbor Butcher like later in the series. I, the I thought that was gonna happen. Mm-hmm much later because i watched the series with my dad mm-hmm. who has had seen it previously when it first came out and i i remember sometimes the first season I'm like oh they're gonna do a season about like catching dexter like he's he's the serial killer mm-hmm. and he's like mm-hmm, yeah maybe <laughs> yeah and, and it felt super early because it's like okay you're building up dexter he's, he's a serial killer who hunts serial killers mm-hmm. and i thought it was like yeah they'll it'd be like the end game right it'd be like season seven eight that they're hunting Harbor butcher maybe for a season or two and the fact that it happened at season two and i knew there was like was it six more seasons? Yeah, yeah, six more seasons. I was like, okay, well, what's happening here? And then when Dokes was getting closer and closer, like he he knew it was in his, his gut feeling, like he was the true detective who was like, there's something wrong he was about the this only guy. Good detective there. He's the only <laughs> yeah, good detective exactly. there who could sniff out Dexter. And he's like, I like how he gave him like he just gave him shit the whole time. He just like, would walk to his desk and Dexter's like good morning, and he's just like, give him like just stare him down and yeah. walk to his desk. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, like I feel like it would have been so much better um, to be able to watch it when it was actually coming out. Mm-hmm. where you don't know how many seasons yeah. there's going to be because we knew there's eight seasons so we're I'd watching say, in yeah. season two the hunt it's like well i don't think the show that's called dexter is going to have the main character like <coughs> in jail and then maybe they do a prison like something ridiculous like that well, right? so so you kinda knew. Death penalty. Yeah, yeah death penalty in florida for what he's doing yeah so then you you kind of knew it was it was going to work out but no nah, i mean i definitely like season two i love the dokes aspect um mm-hmm. that's probably my favorite well, it's tough. I, I would still probably say season four with uh, mm-hmm. Arthur Mitchell, the Trinity Killer, but like Dokes, that dynamic it was pro- is right up there. The only thing I wasn't as big on was Lila, like a bit annoying, mm-hmm. but I guess I mean, it yeah. makes sense <laughs> because again, it was someone who Dexter could be himself around, right? Mm-hmm. Even though she herself had like a very dark side. So it kind of like showed, I guess it kind of gave Dexter a chance again to choose to embrace his dark side but then once again like that that fake life he created for himself started to become real where like his love for the kids right um and, like saving them was more important than than kind of being himself and being with someone who loved him even with like that dark side right that's that's a, a trend i saw with the show like every season he got closer and closer with someone uh that knew who he was like mm-hmm. it was um Kind of like a killer, right? into a life of how he could like connect with someone truly being himself like his dark passenger he said it's like mm-hmm. i struck killer yeah. then lila then lila then in the third season you had miguel, miguel. oh miguel yeah 
the um, lawyer. Yeah, the lawyer. Mm-hmm. fourth season is there's Arthur Mitchell because she was like, like not just like their like serial killer people were uh, fighting, but it was like the them as actual people were bonding. Mm-hmm. Um, then they understood the Dark Passenger. They understood like how they had to live. And then Hannah McKay was she fifth or sixth season? Seven. She was later. Oh, she was at later. least sixth, I would say. In the fifth season, there's Lumen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where that was again kind of just a forgettable season. Yeah. I felt like it was it was, mm-hmm. it was very isolated. Yeah, I, I forget it. You said Lumen, yeah. like mm, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we'll, oh, we'll, okay. we can quickly get to some of the later seasons, but yeah. I feel like we'll do like the first four in depth, and then the ending, and then the rest kind of be like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and then the yeah. one guy like force the victims to drink their blood, and then you know this and that. <laughs> yeah. so, that was so, one of the seasons. But uh, so season two, yeah, we'll just wrap that up. Like obviously, like and oh, and also like Lundy came right for oh, the yes. fbi to cool. investigate thing with deb and lundy mm-hmm. so that was really good like those two storylines were so good i just i don't know i found lila very unlikable just because she was i don't know very dark and like sinister and manipulative which i guess you could kind of say the same about dexter but you <laughs> know the show is not called dexter. lila the show is not <laughs> called lila so you know. no the dexter but, in a in a lovable light in yeah. small parts right yeah, so. yeah. No, but uh, it's more just like the stuff with the kids and like trying to burn them alive. You know, I didn't like that part very much. Um, yes. Something I mean, about, yeah. about burning kids alive is kind of off. Yeah, it's, just, it, it, it's, it's kind of, yeah, I'll put it. That's the way. Yeah. Kind of red, red flag. <laughs> red flag. <laughs> but she was hot. I'll give her that. But, <laughs> <You'd like. laughs> but uh, yeah, so season two and then obviously... Dexter like very luckily like gets out of it with dokes because he had him like um, imprisoned Lila, basically. Yeah. In um, in like the uh, Everglades, the area, some yeah, cottage yeah. in the Everglades. And then Lila like followed his GPS there and for some reason thought to like turn on the gas and then burn the thing, you know? Yeah, because she was, she got there before anyone else did. Like the cops were onto Dexter and if, if it weren't for Lila, they would have got there first. Mm-hmm. And then dokes would explain everything yeah because uh dexter wouldn't kill him if the one with the code mm-hmm. lila's like i'm so in love with dexter like i i don't care it's a serial killer i'll uh i'll save him i'll do whatever it takes and he she exposed the cabin yeah no. and uh, i love this because alex is like learning as we talk about it too I, yeah because no, I, I, I totally <laughs> forgot about her yeah. blowing, I, I knew the cottage i knew it blew up i forgot it was hers that, that, i thought yeah, it was like an accidental is... gas well yeah. she, she purposely was like yeah. she was like and um meanwhile obviously <laughs> They think it's Dokes because Dexter's framed him, right? So, like, that was kind of that was pretty shitty, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I like Dexter, but that was that was pretty it, well, pretty shitty. Wasn't right? intentional though, because Dokes yeah. stole the bloodslides. Oh yeah, that's true. Yes, I he remember broke into his apartment, stole the bloodslides. That, that's what that's what he confirmed. He knew. Yeah. Yeah. And Dokes and that is the there. point, right? With the code, is like, what's the number one rule? Don't, Don't get, get caught. caught. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what that was, right? Where Dokes kind of forced his hand. But that, yeah, I mean, season idea. two is great yeah. for sure. I know that mm-hmm. happens in season two and seven, where it's kind of like the rules confine with each other, or like they and with each other there. New blood, but we'll get there because <laughs> it's like <laughs> don't get caught number one rule, but it's also like don't kill the innocent. Mm-hmm. So those two are like, well, if I kill the innocent, I won't get caught, but yeah. you know, I'm killing innocent person. Yeah, mm-hmm. this brings us to and season then, three. Uh, oh, sorry, season three, which. Yeah. I'd say it's probably the worst of the first four, but I still yeah. enjoyed it. It's just kind of a lighter season. Like there's really no point where you're where the stakes are that high. Like mm-hmm. I just felt like it's kind of like, yeah, you know, this is good. Like it, it was a good season. I liked it. Um, it it, it kind of was sandwiched by two very intense seasons, three really. Um, so I still liked it. I like, I, like I enjoyed it quite a bit. Not just because I liked Dexter. I like the morality of it. Yeah, yeah. Question the ethics. It, it, it brought up a, a very good point. Like Matthew and I were, we're talking about this uh, off screen here the other night, but it was it brought up um the yeah the morality of if you stop this person who hasn't directly killed anybody, but policies are going to put in place will eventually cause harm to people and like that's turn. almost certain death, right? Should that person be be killed or eliminated, right, yeah. out of their position of power because they could potentially or no they they will have um stuff that they implement that will cause harm to people so in the sense of like killing one person who hasn't committed an act yet in this or may have not may not do the act to save the lives the trigger, of like thousands kind of thing they didn't pull the they trigger didn't pull the trigger but they set the trap yeah they didn't pull the trigger with the load of the gun kind of thing and that's kind of the whole thing with dexter right is like it, it brings up kind of a moral so. gray area of just mm-hmm. like 
you know, Vigilante these people who walk yeah. free, who've done horrible things. And then like, what do you do? Because obviously, you know, the criminal justice system is nowhere near perfect. So mm-hmm. like, what can you do? But I, I I would also say, I don't think someone just like killing all the, like, like being a vigilante serial killer is, is a great solution either uh, in the long run. But uh, it, it just, it makes it interesting. So I brought yeah. up like a very like, interesting yeah. Yeah. Like, question for the series, which, which is deep for a show that we're talking about had like, very tongue-in-cheek kind of humor with Dexter and Masuko, Masuko, right? And all yeah, these Masuka, characters. So. Yeah. Masuka, yeah. 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 Like and so, yeah, like, like season three, we don't have to go into it too much. Although I would say it was interesting how Dexter kind of got a protege in um, mm-hmm. Miguel, who is like the DA for Miami, which is obviously a very powerful position. His brother, Dexter killed his brother in self-defense. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah. and then ended up killing the guy who Miguel thought killed his brother and he saw and then they bonded and Dexter kind of showed him the ropes and yep. Miguel eventually just became like too obsessed with vengeance and too much pent up anger where he was killing people who like didn't actually do anything really wrong like he killed like a defense attorney which like obviously no one likes you know serial killers or these awful people having a defense but like I think most people could agree everyone should have a defense right like that's yeah. kind of just the way a trial works like everyone deserves right, a yeah, defense so like you know obviously you don't like the people they defend but they still have a role in society right so mm-hmm. like that was just a total over the line like killing totally unnecessary and yet again so we have Dokes who La Guerta loved who died and then she became friends with this defense attorney yeah. during the season and she dies. Miguel kills her. Oh, oh I forgot they were friends. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, De- oh, yeah. and then Dexter had to kill Miguel because he, it was like, he created a monster, he a, right? He, he broke the code. <laughs> and, and it was, he broke the code. And also Dexter was definitely partly responsible for the deaths, like a little bit, just the fact of like kind of empowering him and, and giving him tips, you know, like training him kind of the way he was trained a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good season. I liked it. Uh, but I would say the weakest of the four uh, weak, maybe the wrong word, but just like just not, not as much, not as much stakes, like but not as, not as you could get rid of season three. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Like still better than everything after season four. But you could get rid of it and not really miss anything, you know, like if you just skip season three. But still, don't. Like if you like the show, it's good. Watch, watch the show. Watch, watch We're not advocating for skipping episodes. That's, that's no. something that, like, I, I don't want to judge a show until I've seen it or watched it. Uh, and if I do have any opinions on it, I'd be like, take whatever I'm saying with like a hefty grain of salt because I haven't seen the show. Mm-hmm. Just here say. So then, I mean, season four of this one was just long a monster. The, the favorite season, season. Yeah. My favorite season. Well, favorite sounds wrong because it was so like, you're just so tense, like kind of watching. I would say it's it's the season that builds the most tension and you are like legitimately like Invested. kind of on the edge of your seat, you know, focused They're just on trying it. to worm you with this phrasing you saying about Dexter and his favorite episodes and seasons and all the gruesome ones. What? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I would say it was the most compelling. I actually think season one might be my favorite. And then this one is most compelling, maybe. Mm-hmm. It's probably a better way to phrase it. Um, obviously, like, Dexter the, in the home life is really starting. Like, he just got married. He had another, like, they had a kid or they're in the prop, whatever. But baby yeah, on the way. Harrison was born in season four. Yeah. yeah. So new baby. Dexter's, like, getting used to domestic life. And you see how... That's really causing problems for him because he was always able to like <laughs> just balance it in the end, his his kind of like dark side and and regular life. But this season was when kind of that the the dark side was kind of taking over, like his time and and being available, obviously, for his family and that. So you definitely saw conflict in the home life and uh and like you know it, it seemed like they might be headed for a divorce or something but then they kind of got it back on the rails and meanwhile arthur mitchell obviously lundy's back forgot about him yeah, lots back. lots of stuff in that season because that's uh like his cover life became like his priority for a moment because you know he has a child his wife because he got married in season three he has two other kids he's looking out for mm-hmm. uh they just moved into like a bigger uh bigger house better neighborhood and he has like no time left over for his uh, um, his uh, free activities, you know, mm-hmm. you call them. But so that's kind of like get pent up inside him. So he's no longer, he's kind of like on edge the whole time because he has no sleep. 
Yeah. Because usually he has no sleep because he's out in the middle of the night doing this, but he now has no sleep because he's a baby. So he has mm. literally no time to do his killing. Yeah. And like, there's just, I just think it's the most, I think it's the best season in my opinion. Like I said, just so many things going on. You have Lundy back, which we didn't really mention. Deb dated Lundy and was like quite smitten by him, which, come on, Deb. <laughs> come on, Deb. <laughs> he's like 60. And you're like 28 or whatever she was in the show, you know, but, eh, you know, the heart wants what it wants. And he was a good guy, at least. It was a serial killer. Oh, the person. best person she dated? Yeah. Out of everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was better than Quinn, better than Dexter's brother, better than Dexter. <laughs> we'll, get <to> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. um, Anton, he was, she was with Anton in the third season. Oh, yeah, he was oh, decent. He yeah. was a CI, right? That was He's a CI, CI guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. He was a kind of a cool guy, but... <laughs> uh, you know, I think he had to work on a cruise, and so the love ended, or no, whatever. No, it was, was uh, she. Uh, she cheated on him with with um, Quinn. But no, no, uh, Lundy. Oh, it was a it was a choice basically. And... Now I remember that. Yeah, that was that's a bad that's a odd decision, but um, it's fun. <laughs> it's funny though because that character was in an episode of Criminal Minds that I watched when I was a kid, like probably too young to be watching Criminal Minds. So anytime I see him, I'm always creeped out by him, even though like he was like a upstanding character in the show. Just like seeing his face creeped me out because like, you see someone like, in a certain Ugh. way, it's like, ooh, yeah. right, you like, know. But like if uh, I were to see Michael C. Hall in something else, I'd be like, mm -hmm. nope, that's Dexter. Nope. <laughs> I've seen no him in a comedy before. Yeah, I've seen him in. Uh, he was in the comedy Game Night. A comedy, but he and he but he played he played oh. a villain. Okay, he played like a mobster villain. It was funny, but uh, uh, yeah. that's good. And he was in like a British show on Netflix. I forget. What it was, oh, um, but... oh, I know that. I know what you're talking about. Uh, how it wasn't called House. No, I'm trying to think of a. I have no idea. He no, was not House. No, no, no. We'll move House. on, and Alex can think about. We'll move on. It. I'll think. I'll think about. It. I'll, I'll <laughs> sit right. on that one. Um, <clears throat> so obviously you have like, so Dexter realizes that it's Arthur Mitchell, um, and instead of alerting the police in classic Dexter fashion, he wants he to, to learn himself. from him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so he's like studying him and like he's hanging out with him and his family like how does this guy manage it all you know like keep it all together and uh it turns out he really doesn't like he's super abusive he spends a lot of time away from home like just a horrible horrible guy but and he's I... like he's like he does this habitat for humanity kind of stuff as well he's like upstanding community uh mm -hmm. upstanding person in his community so it's mm -hmm. kind of funny yeah, and like, and he uses those habitat trips partly to be able to like do his killings. Like that was I one of the his, things. Hide his body underneath the cement in the foundation. That <laughs> made it. That made like the police realize it was him because they were like, from here, 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 whatever. Um, I don't remember every detail. We don't really have to get into every detail, but like, obviously, bottom line, police are zeroing in on him. Dexter zeroing in on him. Dexter finds him, kills him. Although he did have a chance to let him die earlier, remember when he was falling off the roof? He saved oh, him. and that's so. Yeah. So one of the times Dexter chose to save him, because um, he wasn't finished with his learning. Kind of thing. He wanted to learn. From him. It was yeah, basically like that would be Dexter in like 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like if he yeah. continued down this life, and maybe also like he wanted to be the one who killed him, right? As opposed to just like a work, like a work accident kind of thing. Maybe mm -hmm. that was a small part of it. Who knows? Um, yeah but then but, that bites uh, him in the ass because yes, then yes. It, that was so very, dexter oh. kills dexter kills arthur mitchell dexter sends the family to disney world or whatever with their grandparents like in orlando yeah. um just because he knew that arthur mitchell knew about knew he was dexter now as opposed to like the alias he was also using his fault like his kyle butcher his alias and something happened arthur mitchell found out who he truly was so he's putting mm -hmm. everyone he loves at risk now yeah or sorry so, you want to quote loves yeah so dexter like sent his family away to so that you know they would they'd be okay and then he kills arthur mitchell and you're like yes yes like he got him perfect and then he gets back to his house you know it's dark and he hears a voicemail or whatever from his wife and so he calls her back and then her cell phone was there and he's like oh that's weird like she left her cell phone or whatever <laughs> And so he walks into the bathroom and sees that his wife is dead holding their infant baby, which was a very, very sad, probably the saddest I've ever been watching a TV show. I'll be honest. Like I usually don't get um, too caught up with TV shows because I know it's fiction, you know, mm -hmm. like, I, like, it, like it doesn't really impact 
like impact that part of my brain that really feels emotion because <laughs> yeah. just say, like, hey this is a, it's this is problematic stuff i'm talking about mitch you know you sound like a serial killer i don't i don't i don't feel emotion <laughs> you're, no. you ever accidentally killed a small animal and felt good yeah no, no i'm not um because it's like if you're watching like i don't know whatever show like you don't really care like you know they're millionaire actors like, yeah you can turn off the tv it's fictional if they're dead you can kind of see them twitch sometimes if they don't stay still enough you know you know yeah. you see that yeah but it's but also like, like the mirroring because mm-hmm. he was born in blood like Dexter exactly saw his mother like dismembered in front of him in a, mm-hmm. and he was sitting in a pool of blood oh, i was like fresh blood you mean like new blood like new blood. Oh, yeah <laughs> no and no. um and then Harrison, his son, is now sitting in a pool of his mother's blood, where mm. he saw his mother mm. die in front of him. Yeah, so it's, it was like that was his biggest fear of seeing uh, his son become him. Like he, mm-hmm. he had, I remember he had that little little um, uh, ima- imagination kind of sequence where it had Dexter and Rita in a park, and it had Cody and Astor running around as kids, and then it had Harrison grabbed one of them and it would, like tied them up or whatever. Oh, that was like his, his darkest fear. His biggest fear is like having Harrison become him. Yeah. And that's one step closer to it. Mm-hmm. And again, I was pretty young when I watched it. Like I was probably 14 or 15. And when I first watched it, I was so shocked and just like, like what? That I actually thought it was like a dream. Yeah. Like, like, I, yeah, like you know how yeah, shows will a, do that, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. A major character too. She was a big character. Everything was kind of, it was like very rocky during the season and then right at the end it seemed like he got it under control and it looked like they were going to be okay like their relationship mm-hmm. and you thought oh that's great like dexter will have a nice family and blah 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 and um so i actually thought it was a dream because you'll see that sometimes where it'll be and then Those he wakes said, up and yeah. he's like oh here's my family whatever yeah um and then we get and then you get to like the end and it's like i don't think this is a dream and then the next season it's like this isn't a dream and i was like what and i was so sad because rita is like probably like the most pure like nice moral character in the whole show Mm -hmm. um so like i feel like she probably obviously wasn't the best fit for dexter but just on her own just like a really nice like good person so for that to happen to her obviously was devastating and then like the kids now, like the older kids who know what's going on. Like that was a tough watch. Like, oh yeah. Um, I, I remember yeah. the next scene. It was like they were setting a like a um, dinner at his like apartment or something, and she sent an extra plate. She's like, "I did that again for like the fourth time this week," and she was like broke down mm-hmm. because they're, she was yeah. setting a, a fourth dinner plate when they needed three. I was like, "That those are the little things." I'm like, "That's great writing," but yeah. I was also just like, "Yeah," because it's it's actually sad because you know like that that's what would happen like for mm-hmm. that sort of thing. You just routine and that so. Yeah, that was a that was a tough one, but really also, good season, I would say. Also, seeing mm-hmm. Dexter like broken down, like he was on the lawn, mm-hmm. just kind of on his knees, didn't really move for like a few hours. He's kind of like, yeah, like he was in that denial stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that was one of the most prominent times he showed emotion. There's like the most emotions ever shown on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and yeah. Uh, gratefully so. But they, again, Mitch, like you said, like it Safe felt like a dream because yeah, yeah, because I was I was 14 when I watched it as well, right? We were both I was grade nine when I watched it, and that was a, a scene where I was like, oh. yeah, like you know bone chilling i was just like i i mic drop like i stopped you know i never watched a show where there was like a legitimate again like a legitimate shock like that and just like legit being like like what like it actually like made me sad you know Mm -hmm. and i remember al i talked to him before who we had on our first episode um like he had like the same reaction as we did because he was a similar age as well i think particularly because it was rita too um whereas if it was like batiste not not, nothing against batista (laughs) but just like maybe like a slightly less like important character or someone we don't know as much as about maybe like their personal life Mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been so shocking and like um yeah but so well written i think it's the best season but it doesn't matter i mean the first four are all good in their own way um a lot of shows tend to like like not kill fan favorites or not kill like major characters mm -hmm. um for the sake of like pleasing the fan but mm-hmm. this is why like i really like the writing of the show because they they weren't afraid to take it a step further and actually like kill off major characters mm-hmm. yeah. not just for the sake of killing off major characters but it was yeah. like, meaningful like, move the narrative forward not like walking dead no and you didn't <laughs> see it coming at all it wasn't like it was you knew nothing. it was coming for the whole season then it's like ah yeah it did happen or or something right like and it happens again like major characters get killed off throughout the series mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And then I feel like the next few seasons really don't need that much analysis other than just like one point per seat, like just one of the, some of the big things for the show as a, as a whole. And like we said, like you should still, if you like the first four, like I'd I'd recommend just like finish it if you want to, like, it's definitely Mm -hmm. not like not terrible, but I would also say you could probably stop watching after season four and that'd be kind of an alternative ending and you wouldn't really like miss too much. Like there's only a couple things the rest of the way that were that significant. Like the fifth season to me, like feel free, uh, Matthew. I know Alex, you probably don't remember much. I don't Mm, even remember that much either, but feel free, Matthew, to to jump in. But like (coughs) to me, pretty much nothing in this season had any like impact on the show I two points uh, okay great. yeah uh, it was that um dexter and lumen it was kind of showing kind of more of a rebound for him after yeah Rita. What, what's with him and running in a bunch of blonde women like he's he's yeah. always been, other than lila but like Ooh, dexter yeah <laughs> yeah he's got a type, he's got a type. He's a type yeah. um and being more vulnerable but then also deb because at the very end of the season uh deb finds out that oh yeah someone lumen has been just doesn't know who but she knows that one of the victims of these like brutal rapes and assaults are killing yeah. all the all the uh, these you know horrible horrible people that did it yeah she finds she tracks it down she's in front of miami pd finds dexter and lumen behind oh, the screen right. doesn't know it's them but she's like i understand what you're doing and i'm gonna let you go basically mm-hmm. so it shows that she she has a little bit of the more like gray area to yep. allude later seasons about what might happen so it did come up that was one big part i want to bring up yeah that's mm-hmm. a good that's a good point and then season six was that the colin hanks season yeah, with very, the religious, religious aspect <laughs> just a weird one like i get the attempt favorite. i mm-hmm. i admire the attempt it could maybe could have been really good or really cool and something different than the other seasons uh but it did not land i did not think i thought a lot of it was corny yeah very trope part tropish like just like i don't know it, it, it felt a little bit amateurish kind of the way they did it where it was just like boy you didn't strain any muscles with that one like with with certain like bible verses they chose or whatever just just kind of corny stuff i agree it's probably the worst season other than maybe the last but the last might even be better i just haven't seen it in so long but um yeah the one major thing and it's a major thing is uh in the last episode i think it was the last episode of the season um deb walks in on dexter killing uh colin hanks character and so she now knows i wonder if she might have had suspicions after the season before but maybe not not too many like not like dokes level um well, that was even did she like, refuse it yeah she would reject, she reject the idea because yeah. i remember the, the one scene that sticks out to me is when he's like like knife up and then he looked like he stabs and like, looks up and deb's there oh, he's right. like and then is it in there yeah. like i was like oh god <laughs> yeah and then and that then, was the end of the season right that was like the last yeah. episode of the season is that it brought up a really good like ethical <laughs> like most of these seasons do is that mm. what about the the thought of redemption because like um dexter kills horrible people but what if but he won't he, the big part is that of, of his code is that these people are continuing to do these things is that like it's even if even if it was a one-time thing but hmm. uh because he was talking with the sam guy who was like a a priest or he was, or he was some sort of religious figure mm-hmm. and um he was talking about redemption like yeah you can redeem yourself like I, like everyone here at this that his like his auto shop he had hmm. were like ex-cons but they're good now so dexter's like you know like two months before this he would have killed everyone in this auto shop but now he's realizing mm-hmm. they're good people they're redeemed so like am i capable it, of change yeah that's a good point I, I forgot about that storyline with the uh kills okay. capable of change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point point. and then season seven really the whole i, I don't even remember all of it but the that's main thing i remember is just laguerta like zeroing in on dexter as mm-hmm. the because she she pretty much knows he killed um Colin Hanks' character, uh, pretty much, or at least that Deb was involved, and and then she's zeroing him, zeroing in on him as the Bay Harbor butcher, and that. Um, So that was obviously interesting as that's going on, and it seemed like Dexter was going to be okay because that old captain was kind of helping him out, who was friends with his dad. But then obviously, like the last season or the last uh, episode of the season, 
is in the shipping container where he's like killing one of the guys who killed his mom Mm -hmm. and um laguerta catches him like finds him and then deb comes in after and then it's like you know who do you kill like you mentioned matthew like in season one when dexter has the choice of like the moral you know like the moral choice or kind of the like family like almost yeah. primal choice mm-hmm. where you have that like physical not like connection and you know don't forget there's a little bit of love story as well <laughs> did that already start that deb was I like was, i think it was it, season seven and i was okay. gonna i was bringing that up because what's interesting is they so you know they both the actors that uh, was a tough michael watch. c hall and and um jennifer carpenter both met on the set right in 2006 and they got married in 2008 they married so, in season two they married so, yeah they got married in season two technically and so they were married for 2008 2011 so it's season mm-hmm. two three four five and then they divorced so they were recent so recently divorced i don't know how you know bad follow-up was or whatever but i think then, they were fine like i think they're even still kind of friends today but yeah yeah who knows with those hippies but, but, but then, <laughs> like deb had to fall pretend to fall in love and actually fall in love yeah so yeah, after they, divorced, they divorced and then about a year or two later the writers are like let's make this interesting and then they're like did they, they ever actually up. like hook up or anything or was it just she was interested in their mind in in, in like okay. dream sequences for, dream for sequence. deb but i don't know about dexter but for deb they were like they oh, got yeah, together sure kind of thing. Yeah. i don't think dexter ever put a thought into it no. yeah I'm, I'm not sure but yeah it was again um, they did deb dirty once again <laughs> like, she's, she's such like a great character a good she's character good, but yeah. like they just keep making her kind of look like an idiot <laughs> a just, little just bit she, uh, to put her through hell <laughs> so, yeah, she put broke, her through hell yeah she broke all her morals at the season uh she yeah. was protecting dexter and like they kept him on like house arrest kind of like treating it like an addiction like he's killing like an addiction mm-hmm. well that was yeah the previous season right because of that where she found him that he killed yeah that's uh, like the very start of season seven yeah um and, and obviously yeah. he she ended up at the end of season seven picking Dexter, which like you couldn't be surprised by. Like she obviously was like very connected to Dexter. Um also she had but a again, relationship with the Guarda. Like her and the Guarda. Like she kind of like personally saw her to become the next lieutenant. Mm-hmm. It was, was kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah LaGuardia definitely got done dirty. Um I guess that's kind of a theme, right? Is like anyone who's kind of in Dexter's path ends up kind of meeting a tragic end right like yeah. if they're not like on his side maybe that's not the right word but anyone who kind of ch- like in his, zero, in his way close life. to him through yeah that's yeah. a good point. that's a good way to put but it even just people within his within his life get hurt because mm-hmm. of what he does because he has to cover it up and then people are like yeah because between covering it up and the antagonist serial killers mm-hmm. people around him get hurt mm-hmm. and that's what For he sure. to realize yeah and then season seven, that's when he meets Hannah, right? Hannah McKay, yeah. 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 Um, so that's another thing. But then she goes away, doesn't she? Doesn't she uh, go away he, for he a time? gets her up. He locks her up. He's, oh, in prison because he gets her in prison, yeah, right? Because Hannah McKay. Oh, that's right. Deb. Deb, yes. She poisoned her. She poisoned Deb. We think. Behind yeah. the wheel. No, no, he, he knew. He knew. There's, oh, okay. there's evidence yeah. that he poisoned. She poisoned Deb. She was driving on a car crash. Mm. Um and the whole time Deb and Hannah were like bickering and like getting mad at each other. Then Deb actually asks Dexter to kill Hannah because Deb is like slowly accepting his serial killer, his, his dark passenger and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, gave him the green light. Like, you can kill Hannah. Like she got away with all these crimes. And he's like, about that. I'm kind of dating her now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, he and that. then, yeah. mm-hmm. So then season eight, I don't remember this very much. This was a, oh, I, I, I didn't like this one. I didn't like any of the others. Well, I can say I didn't like, but it was such a drop off. They ran out of such steam. a drop off <laughs> that, you know, I don't even rem- remember them hardly. Whereas the other ones I remember vividly and I've rewatched the first four. Yeah. But I know there was some psychologist who knew who Dexter was and she had so, like a son or a former patient or something who was going after want. Dexter. It just seemed you like it didn't make recap? sense to me. Yeah. Why don't you recap it for us? Deb's broken, devastated because she killed like her mentor figure, LaGuardia. Uh, she quit the force, became a PI and kind of like a bounty hunting now. Mm. Uh, wants nothing to do with Dexter because like 
I saved you, Dexter, because you're my brother and I love you, but we're done. Like, we're, it's, it's over. And then this psychologist comes into um, comes into play here because there's the brain surgeon, the new serial killer, who just kind of cuts out a piece of someone's brain. It's like, I think it's the piece that feels empathy. Mm-hmm. I think that was the point. And the psychologist, uh, uh, Evelyn Vogel, uh, actually the psychologist that worked with Harry, Dexter's father. Mm-hmm. And she actually came up with code, the, the code of like, don't get caught. You know, you can only kill, you know, bad people. Mm-hmm. And her son actually killed her other son like when they were like children and like a baby, mm-hmm. sent her like sociopath son to an institution that then he escaped from and now he's on he's like an adult now on the on the run not on the run but he's going like place to place he's a serial killer now Mm -hmm. Uh, moving town to town he eventually comes to miami and he wants he's the one cutting out people's brains yeah uh and sending it actually sending in the mail to vogel like sends the piece of the brain to vogel and that's how she knows that like like one of her patients because she deals with like these people who are like sociopaths Mm -hmm. um is after her not knowing it's her own son yeah then, Again, yeah. seems like a good idea, but I just didn't really think it came off from what I remember. Like, I don't know, it just it took a big dip. Um, obviously, like Deb dies at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, was it the son who killed her? It was, yeah, it was the son because uh, it was a big turning point after Dexter <laughs> text Vogel uh, locks up, like he puts uh, Oliver Saxon, who was the son, uh, onto the table, has him ready. He's going to pull out his knife and kill him, but then he's uh he's done like he doesn't need to kill him he he instead calls deb and is like yeah i'm here come and arrest him because he's he's done with that part of life because he's like the next day he's going to go out with his new well, yeah we should mention he he's gone hannah back Kay. together with hannah and they mm-hmm. seem to be working well like her and harrison were getting along and that and um the next day him hannah mccann and his son Harrison were going to fly down to Argentina and live out their days there. So mm-hmm. he was done with his killing. He's found his love. He has a family now. Uh, one that he truly actually cares about, not just to cover life. Mm-hmm. And now when he calls in Deb to come take an Oliver, because he doesn't want to kill anymore, or he doesn't need to. Uh, instead, one of uh, Deb's PI friends unties Oliver first. He hops out Kills him right away. When Deb comes in, shoots her in the gut. Um, Oliver gets away. Deb goes to the hospital. After her surgery, she's basically brain dead. Mm. Uh, some complications in the surgery. She's basically brain dead. She's just comatose. She's never going to, like, even if she does wake up, she's, like, you'd be bed- bedridden for the rest of her life. So, she, yeah, she, mm. she was, yeah, she was, she was, he ended up killing her. Yeah. And, uh, Dexter, mer- almost like a mercy Dex- killer. Dexter basically mercy killed her. But before that, um, well, he pulled the plug, but mm-hmm. before that, he finds Oliver in this like visitation room because they, they end up arresting him. And there, he egged him on. He's like, he's egging him on. Oliver attacks him and then he mm-hmm. kills him with a pen in the neck. Was, yeah, you know, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. But that was like on camera, everything, everyone saw that. And everyone's like, okay, I understand what you did, Dexter, but you, you kind of, it was self defense. But it was questionable because he didn't care because at this point he was going to flee. He was running away and he was mm-hmm. emotional. He, he had nothing else to, nothing else to live for, in essentially, yeah. there in Miami, mm-hmm. right? So then he pulls the plug with Deb, runs, fl- goes on his boat off into the hurricane. And like, well, he chose, right, to end yeah. up not going with uh, Hannah and his son yeah. because I think he just realized that, like, he was just going to be a danger to them as well because everyone else around him ended up having like this horrible death or some sort of tragic fate and so mm-hmm. like you said he drives his boat out into the hurricane so you figure he's just gonna die and it's like okay it did, it did kill. Yeah. They, they, they found his boat and said yeah he died yeah so it's... they found his boat and everything so it's like okay he's dead and then they randomly cut to like a lumber yard sort of thing and you just see this guy walking around gets into his trailer puts his hat down sits down and it's Dexter with like a big beard and long hair and everything and um, broken. Yeah, and then I it just ends. Yeah. Like I remember being that was so... an ending people didn't didn't 
enjoy because Pe- people did not <laughs> like that ending i don't think at all because it was almost like a lose 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 like it was just like it, it wasn't it like it wasn't conclusive really it wasn't satisfying it wasn't nice it wasn't tragic it was just like and hannah huh? and harrison like, ended up living in argentina alone like it was just yeah. Hannah harrison. yeah it was a very interesting ending but i i see why they did it but I'll, i want to hear you guys opinion first though like why it didn't work for you um hmm. i don't have too much of an opinion on it but like it's i didn't like it but i didn't not like it you know it was, it was yeah. an ending i didn't hate it like other people um i guess just he should have I died guess, he should have just died i think or something mm. like that he should have just died or he should have, now because I, I also don't think it was possible for him to go to argentina and then it just be like hey happily ever after after all that hell happen. he would like, that happened if deb survived yes he would have been happy ever after but because he needed to go back there and kill oliver to save deb um that like his need to kill and all that was because of his faults like everyone yeah. in life ended up dying because of that like go back dokes um Rita, mcgill laguarda deb mm. i don't know if i missed anyone but they, they all died mm. oh they all died because of him mm. and uh, yeah I, I think i i think in vogel vogel ended up dying because of oh him. actually no that, that one wasn't really, it wasn't really his fault she mm. would have died either way because mm. his, his son so Mitch, you're saying it like it just felt more like a little inconclusive for you? Well, I didn't or... I didn't hate it as much as everyone else, but I just yeah, I guess I wish I, I feel like the best ending would have been him dying in some way because he, he should have been kind of like mm-hmm. punished for what he did because there were people who got hurt that were his fault, right? Um, and he did kill like a couple people who didn't quite fit the code, maybe. Um so I guess just drive the boat out. And actually die or get killed by someone similar to him maybe um you had like a similar thing or the police just but something death, death where he Deb would have been an interesting like one. End up that would have been an interesting one yeah. some yeah. way where he dies and i didn't really want him to go i guess electric chair could have been good because that was part of the um like the storyline the whole time right was that's what he was trying to avoid mm-hmm. and then in the end he kind of just he meets like his fate sort of thing. Um, but I guess because they left it open and ended, I didn't really like that. I think that's what a lot of people didn't like, but I didn't hate it. Like it was kind of funny in the end. It was like, Oh, Hey, like yeah. he's still alive. He's, he's, he's I in some place. In himself. Like, yeah. And that's lost everyone closest to him and he's alone. Like at all his build up throughout the eight seasons and becoming like a better person. Like he's mm-hmm. not better, he's but like growing. more emotionally vulnerable. He's yeah. grown yeah. and he's like, capable of love that's all thrown out the window now now that he's here mm-hmm. and he's basically back to square one broken and, and, shuffled. and that's my opinion too because like I, I thought that when i first watched it like i was was it eight years ago now it was um i at first i was like why why is he just up in the woods in the middle of nowhere like this is weird but <clears throat> i realized like this was probably <clears throat> it was this was the tragic part right it was you said he should have been punished for stuff right mitch i i think this was like the worst punishment he could get because he had to sit there he has to sit there now alone he's got to stew with the decisions like he made mm-hmm. and it was yes it was dark passenger but ultimately it was him so he has the rest of his life isolated alone to try to figure out like to just basically think on a loop like Deb this is what i rock. did right sorry mm-hmm. Deb was always his rock it, Deb was his rock exactly so now he's lost he has to he will never stop thinking about how he hurt all these people and so that's that's like for me the the tragic ending because like he's not dead that that was be again not have the closure and yet some sort of like um fitting punishment i guess for what he's done but i think that was like the best uh way for him just 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 be in turmoil for us of his life which it sucks for, obviously for the character like it was because he can't control his dark passenger he's trying to channel it he's trying to do everything right but yeah but mm-hmm. then he also if we go into new blood here he gets to live kind of a happy life like those 10 years maybe he's miserable a lot of the same time he lives like a decent small town life that he's you know he's he seems no not not too miserable but say, like, he seems he's content yeah he's yeah but yeah i mean let's just go to new blood um mm-hmm. which spoiler came spoiling. out yeah oh yeah spoiler timestamp here all right which came out what like 10 years after the end of the first yeah. season or close Last to year. that mm-hmm. um about a decade after and you always kind of thought there might be something because they teased, they talked about it, like the act, like Michael C. Hall and the fans wanted it because he's still alive. So why not? And people didn't like the ending. In the loose end with Harrison. 
Yeah. And so I would say I liked it. Like, I'm glad it happened. I enjoyed watching it. I liked it better than the last four seasons of Dexter, probably, uh, like season eight through season five. Um, I did not think it would, it came close to the first four. It was somewhere in between, you know, um, comparable to, probably comparable to the third season. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I guess it's just different because it's different setting, different characters. So it's, you know, not like it's, it's a different thing. Right. Better um, cinematography. Yeah. Camera. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause like, this was like, they were like legit filming somewhere where that was like the scenery. Whereas obviously like in the show, they make it feel like Miami, but it was just like LA, right? Um, where they were filming it. And I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought, um, I, th- I liked how they made a different take on it. Like they didn't just kind of recreate Dexter completely. Yes. I did find uh, a, some of the acting, how do I put this? Not abysmal. Um, subpar. Maybe subpar. Harrison. I thought Harrison wasn't very good. And I thought the podcaster was a oh, bit ridiculous, yeah. a bit ridiculous of a storyline yeah. and acting wise. I, I understand that she, like, I, I've seen the people before, like the whole, they're the, the again, the bubbly, like the podcaster. So it's, it's, it's a new trope. It, it's, a, it's a new trope. Like that character yeah, didn't in exist. In shows like, these days, yeah. During Dexter, right? Like that, that kind of character didn't never, exist. Because like, like that, because it was early 2000s. Yeah, I guess podcasts around early yeah it would they would have been around but like definitely nothing like now mm-hmm. like the culture around that of, of that person so I, it, I get yeah it makes sense like honestly the, the idea itself isn't terrible i just thought the way the character was written and the uh, performance was very good nothing trying to like just like <laughs> roast this though. random actor who i don't know like nothing against her just like mm-hmm. I, I don't know I, the way the character was written more so i would say than her specifically like i don't mm-hmm. know how the director was and all that but yeah, I didn't really like that storyline. Um, you're right, Harrison. Oof, not not great. Uh, he looked like Dexter, which was good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he did actually. Um, and he, the uh, girl. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but the uh, no. his his uh, stepsister. Stepsister slash girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, spoilers! That's right. Spoilers! <laughs> yeah, spoilers! That was funny. Oh, no, I forgot about are, that. Are, yeah. No, yeah. We're, 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 yes, but yeah, that and she. Oh, I, I didn't yeah. like her acting personally. Either. And then. Um, so I would say like, and then I guess we could just talk about like the end, right? Like that's kind of, oh, well, Harrison, we realized is like Dexter. He has this like, you know, need to kill. Um, so Dexter's trying to help him out like Harry did. And there's back and forth and, and all that. Um, and then in the end, basically, I actually can't remember. Exactly. Obviously, I know the main thing of what happens in the end, which is that Harrison kills Dexter. Um do you remember <laughs> do you remember why he had to kill him because i don't remember um well the lead up to it was that uh, uh they were circling around dexter they're, obviously they're circling around dexter they're closing in because dexter early in the season he had a kill like he, he hadn't killed for 10 years between mm-hmm. like his last kill i guess was technically dead mm-hmm. um until he killed this one guy out in the woods this kind of area yeah, that, the weird kid oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah um and he incinerated him there's a little um there's this little titanium, titanium bolt bolt within his, mm-hmm. his leg there's physical something. evidence against dexter yeah yeah because the titanium one won't doesn't burn so mm-hmm. he the father of that rich kid uh he had he's a serial killer too uh mm-hmm. he took one of the bolts mailed it to dexter and he kept the other for himself saying like i know what you did mm-hmm then uh, <coughs> his his house burnt down the the i forgot his name but like the the, the guy father. from shawshank yeah yeah so. i was i remember his mr krabs he was the voice of mr krabs yeah. he, he, yep. he burns yeah. he burns down dexter's house because they were like cat and mouse at the end because they both knew each other were serial killers mm-hmm. and the titanium like bra that he kept didn't burn so it was in his possession in his house Kurt so then, is his name. Sorry, Kurt. Yeah, Kurt was a serial killer. Kurt Caldwell. Cal- Cal- yeah. Then he, uh, uh, his, his, his police chief girlfriend again. Again, he's tied up with law enforcement. The police. Yeah. Um, finds it, suspects him, arrests him because he's like, well, you have evidence that you killed him. Mm-hmm. And then later on, she calls, uh, Batista. Mm-hmm. 
because she was she was on to him about the Bayhair Butcher. Like she found old pictures of Dexter Morgan because he used mm-hmm. cover name. He found out she found out that it he isn't actually his fake name that he gave. His yeah, uh, it was Jim. 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 More not Morrison. <laughs> I was gonna say Jim Morrison. Yeah. No, Jim. Jim. <laughs> yeah. Probably last name. But I'll look it up. Yeah. I'll I'll know when I hear. But um. Then she, she's doing this digging into the Bay Harbor Butcher case. She knows it's kind of all bullshit. It wasn't actually jokes. Uh, finds the, the, the needle. It was actually his his little M99 that he puts in their, their necks. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. last three victims within the small town. And she, she's, she's tracking them down, yeah. Um, see that. Had those those dots, those little like needle holes. And then finds out like, okay, that's an odd coincidence. Finds out how Dexter dies why he would change his name like that questions him circles around him and then find out he's a bear butcher basically his, yeah. his, his past comes back to bite them but uh calls batista uh because she early in the season had an interaction with him at some sort of uh comic-con thing for cops yeah <laughs> comic-con they were cops Com- yes. Con. Yes. 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 Con, yeah. and uh but he's like oh he died like 10 years ago in this accident send send mm-hmm. he, she sends him like a picture of dexter recently he's like okay i'm coming now yeah this is three months ago yeah okay i'm um, coming down yeah so came from batista which is awesome came from batista that was uh, fun yeah he he did end up getting married hopefully happily i don't know i don't know who we want to ever find out who it is <laughs> batista? yeah yeah what a horny bastard he was <laughs> <laughs> but he always had a weird like side character where he would you saw his love life throughout the, the ages but I was yeah. never really invested in it. I don't, I couldn't. Mm. It, it was a humanizing aspect for him. It was showing aspect. more about, mm-hmm. but, but j- just getting to the, that part was then, so you said wh- how, why Dexter's like son was forced to kill him. It was, um, uh, because he, he had, killed the, 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 the wrestling coach. Slash the, who was, get out. Get he was gone. the best character in yeah. the show. He was, well, he was like a nice a, guy. He was the yeah. nicest guy. He was, he was like guy. a mentor to like, to like all these kids. And all of a sudden yeah. Dexter's like, Hey, don't get caught. And then he, he did the unthinkable. He had to kill him to escape. And once that happened, in my head, I was like, "Okay, he's gone. He's, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna die." He's and like, that's what it has to be. There's evidence like against him. That. He's in yeah. prison, and he killed this other innocent guy. That yeah. Also, Harrison looked up to throughout mm-hmm. the whole season. He's kind of more of a father figure than he was than Dexter was. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So that and that's how. Yeah. He had to do it. Lindsay. Uh, Jim Lindsay. Jim Lindsay. Jim Lindsay. And also I looked something up. So that was a good recap of uh New Blood. Um, so I looked up his name, Jim Lindsay, obviously. And then the name of the town oh, was nice. I was Iron Lake. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is supposed to be a nod to the serial killer's origins. Oh. Where he was born in blood. What's in blood? Iron Iron, oh, oh, Iron Lake. Yeah. Also another thing Matthew pointed out here too was the um uh, I think the uh, the writer of the original book is Jeff Lindsay. So oh yeah, that's so how we, for, we forgot to I forgot to mention that at the start is like I, I gotta read the show book. is based on the books. It's not like mm-hmm. I don't think it's like a shot for shot kind of remake or anything like that. No. Um, but it's definitely based on it, and I'm sure there's characters and storylines that are from the books that are in the show yeah. for sure. It's called Dearly Devoted Dexter. By... That's one of them. I think there's a lot yeah. of them. I wonder if it's just season one or two that it goes through. But... Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Like, see, season one itself like, <coughs> could be like a movie if you put it together mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah. But, but what I liked about New Blood is it kept, like, I was really afraid that, like, you, you see this in a lot of sequels nowadays. They, they slap on the same, uh, like, names and characters and everything, but they completely they change their personalities yeah. and, all the, and all this stuff. And uh, the tone of the show, this was complete. It was Dexter. Like, they had mm-hmm. the inner workings of, like, his, his thinking. You had the slow burn of we knew who the serial killer was, like, at least half of his, halfway through the season. And then how he was, it just the whole story was him unfolding how he was going to catch him. Um, so it, it was very Dexter. Like, I love yeah, the tone Dexter. of the show. and But it, it was different because it was him, I, I get you, it's him trying to help his, like, his son. It's him trying to help his son. He's trying to, like, you know, put us down the right path. But also, like, he abandoned him for 10 years. So it was... It was hard because you know he just, mm-hmm. he's just not a father. <laughs> Could. But, mm-hmm. I guess it wasn't different. I had the family element too, so I guess maybe maybe it was and similar depth. enough to Dexter. And, so. and then um, at the end, obviously, like uh, Dexter's girlfriend or kind of girlfriend who was like the sheriff or whatever of the town finds Harrison like with the gun, clearly just killed Dexter, and then she lets him go. So it kind of ends um, a little bit like you're unsure about what's going to happen for Harrison. 
Yeah. But clearly he was gonna do he was gonna keep killing people. Uh, like who they, knows? They were gonna go on to like a father-son kind of killing thing. Yeah. He's like, let's go to LA. He's like, let's go. Yeah, he's yeah. saying and that. Okay. It was it was kind of it was a little sad because uh that was um uh, Dexter's biggest fear, like again in season four, like with the moment Harrison mm-hmm. was born, he was afraid that and it was he sad me, he's gonna become like mm-hmm. sorry, yeah. And it was sad how like Harrison, like uh Hannah passed away from like cancer. And then Harrison was like going around like foster home, like just like had a really rough, um, like kind of adolescence after his mom died. So, yeah, it wasn't wasn't like a, a happy feel good story, but it was it was good. I'm glad it happened. I thought it was good. Like I said, not as good as the first four, better than the last four and different, which I like. So I'm glad it happened. I really look forward to, we watched the first couple together, Alex, a couple of our yep. friends as well. Um, so that was fun, you know, to be able to, I definitely to see them as they came out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's a good place to leave it. I mean, I, good luck finding a more in-depth uh, Dexter yeah. analysis than we just gave right there. <laughs> um, I think we went for almost an hour and a half, so that's good. Yeah, and anybody hasn't seen the show yet, you've obviously turned it off by now, but yeah i'd say i'm again i'll say at the, the time save at the beginning turn it off for the spoilers i think you mentioned it but yes that's before yeah. the new blood before the i guess blood. new blood's yeah. the one that we would want it yes like, oh yeah and, be, and before sorry before we go i just wanted to say so you you watch dexter because of i know like dad yeah and, and i've seen it before, before. Yeah. but so your gener like i see your generation you're five years younger than me yeah have they do they know about dexter like do your friends do you know about dexter yeah. is it because we were mission i were on the tail end of it so it's yeah. like you so guys like, knew about Dexter. There's only one person around my age that I know. He knows of Dexter, but like I'll tell people, oh yeah, I'm watching the show Dexter. Like, oh, okay, what's, what's that? Like, they, they know mm-hmm. my age, they knows it because it came out 2005. I was born in 2005, yeah. so it was, it came out. It, it ended like 2013 or something. So, yeah, it would have been eight. Yeah. So 2006. Yeah. Yeah. So it was definitely ahead of behind my time. I also had, mm-hmm. um, so yeah. I, yeah. I would say like our age, Alex, like I know, we know people who've seen it. I know like a couple other people, even for, like my high school who've seen it because we were at the age where like the last season we would have been old enough to watch, like while it was on. It's like if people's parents watched it right, that's probably how they would have got introduced to it. But yeah, it's a good show. I mean, I recommend it. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, like I like I said to you, Alex, before, like as I've rewatched as I'm older, like I definitely don't think of it quite as highly in like a production value of a type cinematic of like yeah no, like, season one and two like yeah. it was very cheap like i could i almost thought it was a 90s show like yeah. the way it was like the camera quality and everything i thought it was yeah. like 10 years earlier mm-hmm. so but but i enjoy it just as much like in a still different a way story. so i would still highly recommend it's definitely my top five like favorite shows probably not my top five best shows i've seen but one of my favorites for sure so yeah, yeah i guess that's a good place to leave it if you've gotten this far You've, I'm guessing you've either seen the show, and if you haven't, you might as well watch now, or, may, or maybe you don't. Maybe we covered it, but <laughs> but we still recommend it. Um, I'm not even sure what it's on. I think it's on Air Paramount Plus now. Like Crave and it's stuff. He, it says Amazon Not Prime. anymore. Not anymore. Because oh. oh, I watched it on Crave, and then it went away. I think it's on Paramount Plus. So like, you have to get Prime, and then you have to get Paramount Plus on top of that. Yeah, because it says like... Paramount Plus subscription plus Amazon Prime and so, Apple TV. I watched but you have to it like, on, on demand. I saw it on demand. But I feel like if okay. it was released onto, like, netflix or disney plus or whatever yeah um, i think it would be big again it would be like like friends like my generation everyone knows friends because it was on netflix mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. well it was netflix for that for that long but mm-hmm. um even if it was out on netflix for like a year or two it would get like a i feel like it would get a huge following again yeah because netflix yeah. has a more brand recognition again, like, than prime video because i think netflix just like <clears throat> i think more people have netflix than prime video for sure but yeah so yeah netflix would I be remember how <clears throat> avatar came with netflix and then the vast airbender and uh, that summer during quarantine, everyone was like, everyone talked about it. It was everyone that everywhere. And they have like three new sequels coming out now. Summer so 2020, because like, it blew up because of Netflix. Right? So, Wonder what are you watching like, Netflix? So Put Dexter on Netflix again, because that's where yes. I watched it. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I watched it, it was on Netflix. So, well, I think we'll leave it there. That was quite the yeah. in-depth, uh, yeah. in-depth Dexter episode. Uh, but that was really good. Thanks for coming yeah. on, Matthew. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. If the maybe we'll, we'll have to get you on again if there's something, uh, some other topic that that works uh, later on. Something yeah, you I'll, just need to get off your chest. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to. Yeah, Alex, take us home. All right, guys, thanks for watching <laughs> and uh, <laughs> follow us on um, Eminem Podcast Eminem. It's at Podcast Eminem TikTok. 
Instagram and Twitter. Twitter and YouTube at Eminem Podcast. So subscribe. Subscribe and follow, guys. Save it for the podcast. That's perfect. What you're talking about. That is absolutely perfect.